What's up, gang? This is Zach Ken Zilligan, Zika Milligan, and Villa Villa Villa. We are back on Fate Stay Night. Where did I leave off? Last episode, we introduced Saber and Ren that they were staying with us to Fujine and Sakura. So now we're in day six. Chaos ensued. Saber beat the crap out of uh, Fujine. And now we're in day six. Let's see what's popping off here. February 4th. I mean, no, February 5th. My bad. Fate. Day 6. Blade. Oh, yeah, man. With a name like Blade, this is about to be eventful. I don't got all that much time to record today either, so... <laughs> a night passed. After getting ready like I... After getting ready just like I would on any normal morning and heading to the living room, I'm greeted by the most complicated breakfast table scene of my life. Oh, sorry, Sakura. I can't eat butter. Pass me the marmalade. Is that so? I thought you didn't enjoy sweet things, Miss Tosaka. That's nonsense. All girls like sweet things. It's not that I don't like sweet things. I just shouldn't have too much of them. If I'm not careful, things can start building up in places I can't see, so I limit myself to eating sweets once a week. That's good self-control. Huh? So why marmalade? I have sugar in the morning. Besides, I should have some sweet things or I might pay for it later. I see. Even if you only eat twice a day, it would be a big problem if you ended up eating twice as much. Exactly. Hey, I wasn't gonna say anything, but you sure eat a lot, Saber. You might have a small frame, but you eat just as much as Sakura. Do you think so? I think I eat an average amount. I would like to point out that the toast Sakura ate was twice the size of mine. Goodness, she eats! That's not true. Mr. Tosaka, Saber, and I were all served two pieces of toast. Yes, but the thickness was different. One, one was one centimeter thick, while the other was two centimeters. Which tells me you eat quite a lot, Sakura. You are in a growth spurt, so there's no problem with you taking in nutrients. Rin, instead of only eating instead of eating only one slice, you should eat everything that's been served to you. I said I can, okay? Everything I eat doesn't go straight into my chest like Sakura. And if I eat all that in the morning, I'll just end up storing it. I don't usually even eat breakfast, so I'm already compromising. Mr. Sakura, I suggest you not say that in front of Senpai. You continue mentioning that you accumulate things, but why are you avoiding using specific terms, Ren? Like I said, places I can't see on my body. Well, Sakura accumulates in places you can see, so she doesn't count. Hold on, they clowning. Please, don't talk about that kind of thing. <laughs> Shiro just sitting here like, what the freak is- What happened to the house that I love? What happened to the country I love? I take a bite of my crispy toast. My branches can't follow the situation unfolding in front of me. So I just stay out of it and focus on my toast. <laughs> There's nothing for me to add to this anyway. <laughs> I guess I worried over nothing. For the time being, the three seem to be getting along. So sock is the same as always and Saber's warmed up to the girls a good bit more than last night. Sakura still seems a little hesitant around Saber, but it doesn't look like she dislikes her. I'm concerned that Fujine is not here, but I'm sure she'll come tonight. Last night must have done a number on her. But she'll probably come by for dinner, and I think she'll be in a better mood by then. Breakfast ends and I start cleaning up. Senpai, are you sure it's okay to leave the washing to you? Yeah, it's the least I can do. You gotta get going to your club. Considering what happened yesterday, you should probably go. Yes, I'll go on ahead. Sakura bows to Tosaka too and leaves the living room in a hurry. Now there's only three of us. With Sakura gone, the people remaining all share a common secret. Okay. Once it hits the hour mark, 
I'm stopping the recording right there. All right. Once it hits the hour mark, once it hits the hour mark, I'm starting. I'm stopping the recording. I don't have. I don't have a lot of time to record today. So unless like something absolutely insane is going on, like I'm stopping it around one hour. I'm stopping it around the hour. Well, I shall excuse myself as well. Please call for me if you need anything. Bye, Saber. I'll look after Shiro, so you keep an eye on the house while we're gone. Yes, please take good care of Shiro, Ren. Saber bows quickly, then returns to her room. Uh, there's nothing to do here anymore. So she's probably going to going back to sleep to conserve energy. Honestly, is fighting the only thing she thinks about? Of course it is. You should start sowing a bit of motivation on that front, or Saber's gonna lose patience with you. Her wounds may not be completely healed, but she's not the type to sit around doing nothing for long. There's a clicking sound. What the heck was that? What Osaka has to say worries me a bit, but she just turns on the TV. This news again? The TV plays the morning news. I just listen from the kitchen as I watch dishes. But it's the same story that I heard before. There was another gas leak incident in Shinto. What a stupid story. Stuff like this is happening here too. It's not just going on over there. What? Hold on. What Tosaka says there is pretty worrying. Tosaka, what do you mean by that? It's about people suddenly getting weak without any real explanation, right? How people are passing out without warning and they end up hospitalized in a coma? There must be a lot of people affected by now. At least nobody's lives are in imminent danger, but I suppose that's all down to whoever's controlling this. Wait, 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 hold on. Is she saying that this incident isn't just happening a town over, it's happening here too? Unexplained comas. A good number of victims. No, but the main issue is... So, Sokka, don't tell me you think a master did this. But who else? Come on, get used to it already. You're a master too, you know? Okay, maybe so. But why didn't you tell me this before? Because there's no easy fix here. The master who cast a bounded field over school is third class, but whoever's causing these incidents across the whole town is first class. They're skilled enough to extract the power they need from people without killing them. And while gathering energy that way may be slower, they're staying within the rules for mages, and they don't need to exert themselves to accomplish this. This master's stealing the life force of everyone in town, one of the simplest forms of magical energy from a remote location. A remote location. Can someone really collect magical energy from a distance? He must be a really skilled mage. Only a truly great mage would be able to cast a nest over a net over two towns like Shinto and Miyama to absorb energy like that. Or maybe they were or maybe they lucked out in a superb spiritual site. Father mentioned that Fuyuki has a ley line, so if they build a base there, it would be easy to collect life forces. Hold on, Tosaka. I didn't find any materials in Father's study about this, so if there are any, they'll be in the Great Master's study. Uh, I really don't want to go in there. The place is uninhabited and scary. Which would mean I might have to ask Kire. No, I really don't want to owe him anything. Tosaka! I try to get her attention, but she doesn't respond. Stop ignoring me! Great, she's off in her own world. Oh my goodness. When we get to school, she's still distracted. The gate is packed with arriving students, beginning another typical school day. But I sense there's something off. Yesterday I passed through the gate without noticing, but today I do notice. Do, but today I do, now that I'm on my guard. It's hard to explain, but there's a feeling that things are too calm. So much that it numbs one's instincts. You're right. The air feels different in here than outside. It smells like sweet honey. Oh, so that's how it feels for you? You don't have any skill at detecting magical energy, but you might be sensitive to changes in the world around you. 
The Sokka begins pondering. A sweet smell like honey, huh? Maybe a carnivorous plant, maybe. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. A carnivorous plant, that's disturbing. You think so? I don't think it's off the mark, though. I mean, once a, once the bound of the field over the school closes, everyone inside gets eaten. She sees right through me and I go, <laughs> I knew it. I love that I can read you like a book. Whatever, well, I don't like it. Oh, don't get so mad. I know what you want to say, so relax. I know you don't want all the students getting dragged into this, and I wouldn't want this to be a battlefield either. See? So there's only one thing for us to do. Dear Jesus, Lord. She's testing me. So Sokka's trying to tell me that this master I'm willing to fight in the Holy Grail is some sort of... is a sword who's hurt... Ah! The sucker's trying to tell me that this master I'm willing to fight in the Holy Grail War is a sword willing to hurt innocents to win, which is why they're here at the school. I know. We need to find the master who set up this bounded field and take care of it. And if they say they're not going to take down the bounded field, the witches need to defeat them. She needs to stop looking at me like that. Those eyes are scary. It feels like she's just about to like just do things to me that I don't want done. I don't like that. Uh, that's right. Glad you got it. I'm going to go search for whoever set up this bounded field, so you go and check anywhere that seems suspicious. I've done some searching already, but I might have missed something. And it looks like you're good at finding singularities like this, so I'll let a specialist try his hand. The Sokka waves and runs toward the school building. Hey, don't just leave me hanging. What kind of place are suspicious? To quote you, anywhere the air is sweet. You just need to find places that are nauseatingly syrupy and sweet. So Sokka yells her reply to him across the campus. And then she disappears into the school building. What the hell? Why would she need to run in there like that? School. The bell for homeroom rings. That's why. She could have at least warned me. I clutch my bag and start running at full speed. After all that happened yesterday, I don't know what Fujine will say if I'm late. It's lunchtime. Temporary, through, temporary though this break from classes is, students rush back and forth across the whole school. Okay, it won't look suspicious if I wander around now. I wolf down my lunch and head into the hallway. This really isn't the time to say I've never done anything like this. The war has already begun. So now I need to look for anything suspicious, like what Tosaka was talking about in my own way. I guess the first place to look would be wherever there's not usually people anyone around. Let's see. I just hope I can make some progress without wasting... Wasting this one hour lunch break. After I've searched the after I've searched the building, I take a look outside just to be sure. I didn't see anything strange in the athletics field or behind the buildings, but this area just seems different. Don't tell me this is I found a few suspicious spots around campus. Behind the stairways, dead ends, empty classrooms, and other less public places. This place is different. Everyone gathers here every day, so it's a far cry from the isolated, deserted places I've checked. How did I not notice this earlier? This place is the most bizarre place of all. I clutch at my chest as I speak. The atmosphere here is suffocating. The heavy wind and humid air make being here all the, all the damn more uncomfortable. As soon as I realize what I'm smelling, I find myself getting nauseous. Osaka said there should be a base point for bounded fields. I don't know how many there are, but I think the first must be somewhere around here. If I'm right, there should be an inscri inscription or a sign of it somewhere. It's no use. I don't have the ability to detect magical energy, so there's no way I can find any signs that a bounded field has formed. I guess I have no choice but to report back to Tosaka. Oh, it's you. Looking for something, Emiya? Who's there? I whirl around when I hear that voice. 
there standing in front of the Kudo Club Dojo is Shinji. Shinji. Hey, what a coincidence. I was actually heading that way myself. You didn't happen to see it, did you? Shinji grins. Shinji Mato seems genuinely pleased with himself. See what? I don't see anything around here. Ah, you did see it. I get it now. So that's why you and Tosaka were together. Yeah, teaming up with other masters is an efficient way to go. Shinji is a mass. Oh my goodness. We finally have a reason to kill him. Thank you. What? Shinji, don't tell me. Hey, chill, Emiya. It's between you and me. We shouldn't be hiding anything from each other. I don't know what the hell's following you around. But you got forced into this crappy role as master too, right? Shinji's so blunt about this. Not an ounce of hesitation. He's a master and not shy at all about it. Don't tell me. You're a master, Shinji. That's what I've been saying. But hey, don't get me wrong. I've got no intention of fighting anyone. Sure, I'll kill anyone who tries attacking me. But I won't do anything if it leaves people if, if, if people leave me alone. I won't do anything if people leave me alone. See, we're a lot like in that regard, aren't we? Shinji giggles. I do not trust that. From what he's saying, it's clear he's a master, but there's a pain in my throat. I need water. From what he's saying, it's clear he's a master, but. I'm actually quite surprised to learn that you're a master, Emiya. So why do we have a little chat? One shock master to another. A chat? I don't mind, but what are we going to be chatting about? About what's going to happen, obviously. I already told you I have no plans to fight, but the rest of the participants sure do. So it would be best if we're ready for anything that might come our way. Don't you think? It might be scary alone, but not so much if there's two of us. Is Shinji asking me to team up with him? Well, this probably isn't the best place to talk about this kind of stuff. Who knows who might be listening? Why don't we go somewhere else? I don't trust him. He's, he's lying so hard. He's probably the one who set up the bounded field. Maybe we could talk in my house. Tosaka wouldn't be able to spy on us there. We'll be safe even if we're attacked. Go somewhere else. Are you crazy? Lunch break is almost over. We wanted to talk. You are so freaking boring. So what if we skip, skip class? Let's just go. I'm glad to know you're a master too. Don't work, Don't ruin the moment. There's no reason to go. People would be suspicious if we skip class. You just won't budge, will you? Oh, I get it. Yeah, you're right. You should be on guard. But don't worry, I'm not gonna attack you. No matter what. Do you really take me for the kind of guy to stab you in the back? Yes, I do. I do. I definitely take you as that kind of guy. Oh, oh, yeah, I guess I shouldn't just casually follow you, huh? Well, whatever. You have a servant hanging around you too, so I'm not gonna pick a fight with someone so dangerous. Huh? Does Shinji think I have Saber with me right now? Actually, no. Shinji just can't see the servant in spirit form. That's why he thinks I have Saber with me. Just come on. If Osaka finds out, neither of us will live to tell the tale. Shinji starts to walk away. Guess I have no choice but to follow him. I'm interested to hear what Shinji has to say. So at this point, let's just give up on attending afternoon classes. Shiro! You're stupid! You walk up the hill. Like Jack and Jill. But they went down the hill. I'm so for real. Okay. We're in a, we're in a residential area with Western style houses and start contract to my house. I hear Tosaka's house at the top of the hill. And I remember the Mato house is right below it. 
like he's trying to hide or something. Oh my goodness. The model house is still as impressive as I remember. I visited a few times during middle school, but I haven't been near it recently. I haven't been invited since Shinji and I drifted apart, and above all, Sakura doesn't like me coming here. It's daytime, but the mansion is dark. The whole place is designed so that sunlight doesn't get in. There's not much in the way of lighting inside. There's honestly a decent enough chance of someone smacking into a wall if they don't know the layout of the place. This way, Emiya. I'm in the living room. I don't know when he got there, but I hear Shinji's voice in the back of the mansion. Even after a year, I still remember my way around the house, so I'm able to find the living room easily enough. There's nothing in the way of lighting, even in the living room. The curtain is pulled shut, blocking out the sun. Not a hint of artificial light either, so the place is dark and gloomy. Over here, Emiya. I turn toward the voice. There I see Shinji sitting on a chair and... A woman, dark like obsidian, standing behind him. Let me introduce let me introduce her. This is my servant, Ryder. A chill runs down my spine. The chill is so intense it stings the back of my neck. Thought we were gonna talk alone, Shinji. I take a step back. Don't mind her. She's just here as a precaution. I wouldn't want you taking the chance to ambush me. I'd rather have her nearby. Shinji reaches out toward his servant, Ryder. His fingers caress her waist and stroke down her thigh. Yo! Ryder doesn't move a muscle. She's as still as a statue, keeping watch on me through veiled eyes. I imagine she can see my fingertips shivering. Some, hospi some hospitality is showing to a guest you invited. You might be going a bit too far with your caution, Shinji. I'm just kidding. I know perfectly why you're not the type to do something like that. Your servant's another story, though. Training this one took me a while, actually. It's not unusual for a servant to ignore their master's orders. So just think of this as me keeping my eye on things. A servant who doesn't obey their master. Now that I look closely, Ryder is a little different than Saber. Saber's silent, but she's not frosty. I sense only coldness from Ryder. A human almost completely lacking humanity. A dark figure that looks like the blood in its vein is discolored. She doesn't give the impression of a heroic spirit turned servant. I can only sense something inorganic, devoid of any light. So Ryder's right your way of keeping my servant in check. Can't say I love that. Sorry about that, but I'm an amateur, you know? I'm not used to this kind of stuff unlike you. You'll have to forgive me for that. Can't say I'm exactly used to this either. That's so. Oh, then why don't you call out your why don't you call yours out too? That'll help us understand each other. And things will be even. Yeah, let's do that. Hey Emmy, I showed you mine, so show me yours. Shinji really thinks Saber's next to me. It's probably best to let him keep thinking that. I refuse. If you're doing if you're just doing this to keep me in check, you shouldn't mind. That should be enough if I'm here to talk. What the hell? Don't you get it? I said I want to see it. I don't know why you're being a little piece of crap about it, but I think it'd be in your best interest to listen to me. Then we're done talking. I didn't come here to show off our servants. If that was what you wanted, I'm heading home. Fine. You're useless as always. He moans discontently and, stumps up and slumps further into his chair. Okay, let's talk then. There's really only one thing I want to talk about anyway. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, wanna team up with me, Emiya? I might have become a master, but I don't know what the holy what the hell a holy grail war even is. I'd rather work with someone I know I can trust than do this by myself. Hold up, I wanna ask you something. My answer will depend on your response. What's that? You want to know why I became a master? I nod. 
As far as I know, Shinji's not a mage. Till I find out how Shinji was selected for a master, I don't intend on working with him. Oh, crap. I hear mages are the only ones who can be, be masters. I may be inexperienced, but I am training in magecraft. I became a master because I formed a contract with a servant by sheer coincidence. Did you accidentally summon a servant to get dragged into this Holy Grail War too? If that's what happened to him, we're in the same boat. I don't think I'd be able to refuse his proposal to team up in that case. So you became a master by coincidence, huh? Good. That's a more reasonable explanation. Shinji giggles like it's the funniest thing he's ever heard. Well, I guess something similar happened to me. At least in that I was forced into becoming a master like you. Don't get me wrong though. I knew what masters were. And I've known about Holy Grail Wars forever now. Unlike your family, the Mato family is a respected line of mages. What? The Matos are a family of mages? I've never heard that before. Wait, does that mean you... And Sakura, his sister, have also trained in magecraft. Calm down, Emiya. The Mato's family, the Mato family may be a family of mages, but his powers run dry. The Mato ancestors apparently rooted themselves here along with the Tosaka family, but they couldn't adapt well to Japan. And as generations went, the uh, magic circuits, yeah, those started to dwindle. By the time I was born, the Mato bloodline was pretty much back to the point of being more or less ordinary humans. That's why there are no mages in the Mato family. It's just a line that used to be mages. Used to be mages. So now the only thing that remains in your family is your knowledge of magecraft. Yeah, unfortunately. But even if we don't have any magic circuits, we're still able to learn magecraft. I've managed to look up everything about masters and holy grail wars easily enough. I was able to keep my emotions under control when I found myself being a master because of my ancestors' teachings. I see. When they became a master, it was Hosaka who taught me about Holy Grail Wars. So similarly, Shinji was able to understand his own situation thanks to the writings his family passed down. In other words, you only learned about Magecraft itself. Does that mean Sakura's been learning about Magecraft too? Huh? You don't know anything, do you? Listen, old mage families only pass down their secret knowledge to a single person. If there are two children, the oldest male becomes their heir. Splitting something in two just dilutes his power. A mage's job is to collect ten magecraft disciples and crystallize them. Then leave that to the heir to strengthen their bloodline. There are no exceptions, not even for family. That's why mage families don't teach magecraft to anyone other than their heirs. Children who weren't selected to be family successors either never learn that their family practices magecraft or they're sent to be adopted by a different family. I see, that's a relief. I sigh in relief. I want Sakura to live a normal, peaceful life having nothing to do with magecraft. I would never want her to get involved in a battle that forces someone to fight without reason. So now do you get it, Emiya? I may have become a master, but I have no power in magecraft. You, on the other hand, said you can use a little, but you have next to no knowledge of magecraft. See, don't you think we're a good match? We were both forced to become masters. Let's work together. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that. I just wanted to be clear, though. You're proposing this to protect yourself, right? In part, yes. But I think we'll need to work on getting rid of our immediate enemy first. I feel like she's been giving me the evil eye. Giving you the evil eye? Are you talking about Tosaka? Of course I am. She wouldn't be treating me like crap otherwise. Listen, she'll be relentless against the other masters. You should know that by now since you've been with her for a while. I don't know what's gotten into her, but for some reason Tosaka's warned you. Why would a girl who never drops her guard do that? So come on, don't you think this is our opportunity to defeat her? Shinji holds his hand out to shake. 
I won't be part of that. Actually, I can. If Shinji really wanted to protect himself, he would have asked Tosaka too, not just me. Besides, Shinji, do you know there's someone overseeing this Holy Grail War? Yeah, the priest at the church, right? He was a I heard he was a survivor of the previous war, but I haven't met him. He seems annoying. I'm not a maid, so I don't want to push it. I don't want anyone to push their rules on me. Shinji's contradicting himself. If he really wanted to stop fighting, he should have gone straight to Kotomine. Shinji, did you know there's a bounded field set up over the school? Yep, I didn't notice, but Ryder told me. What about it? Isn't it your doing? Tosaka said it was the work of a master at school. Oh, well, it's not me. I know there's another master at our school, so it's probably them. I don't trust you! Huh? Tosaka said there was only one master. I wouldn't recommend just blindly trusting Tosaka. Either way, she's wrong. Tosaka's trying to trace masters by sensing their magic circuits, right? If so, I wouldn't be one of the masters she could detect, since I don't have magic circuits to begin with. From the very beginning, I wouldn't even be a blip on, another, on other masters' radars. I see. The presence of mages or command spells ultimately activates through a magical energy. But if someone without magical energy becomes a master, the only way to identify them would be seeing them directly. So Sokka's method of seeking pe seeking out people with their own magical energy. I <laughs> her masters like Shinji. Shinji doesn't have a single one of the traits Sosaka's expecting in a master. I see. So Tosaka must be sensing a different master. I should warn Tosaka about this when I get home. With that settled, there's no point in me staying here any longer. Hey, Emiya. What about our partnership? I'll have to refuse. I'm not going to help you defeat Tosaka. Besides, she hasn't done anything. I know I'll have to fight her one day, but I trust her right now, and I want to keep trusting her. <laughs> when something does happen, it'll be too late. But if that's how you feel, I'm not going to push it. I'll wait it out and see, just like you. Surprisingly, Shinji gives up. He doesn't try to stop me from going home, and he doesn't send Ryder to attack me. Shinji really is a complicated guy. He may act like a jerk, but he seems to try to play fair in his own way. Hey Shinji, I know I'm harping on this, but does Sakura know about you? She doesn't, and I don't intend of telling her. I'm the heir of the Mato family. So Sakura could just remain my little sister and be none the wiser. That would be great. I don't want Sakura's life to change. Fine. Since I'm, her, since I'm her big brother, I should thank you for being so concerned about Sakura. Okay, let me tell you something good, Emiya. I don't know who it is, but one of the masters has set up a nest for themselves in the temple. What, the temple? You mean Ryudo Temple? Yeah, according to my servant, there's a witch living in the mountains. She's supposedly collecting a bunch of souls, so things are going to get ugly if nobody does anything about her. If that's true, that makes five masters. And if this witch is collecting a massive amount of souls, there's a high probability it's the cause of what came up in the news this morning. That's all I've got for you. Right, I see him out. You're not to harm Emiya since he's on our side. Shinji orders Ryder, and she walks closer to me. No, well that's... Don't worry about it. I'm responsible for your safety as long as you're in my house. It wouldn't do for you to get hurt or anything like that. Oh, Ryder, you only have to see him as far as the front door. Once he's out of the house, he's not my concern. But treat him well until then. Shinji retreats to the back room. I silently look towards Ryder. 
The black garb rider says nothing. What surprises me though, is that when I take a closer look, I notice she has a graceful and innocent looking face. Her floor length purple hair exudes a foul odor of blood, but at the same time, she's unbelievably beautiful. I realize I'm staring because of her appearance and I'm embarrassed for a moment, but I feel like her face and outfit just don't match at all. If I have to boil her down to a single phrase, she's like a priestess dripping in blood. She's both holy and evil. Ryder's a walking contradiction. Actually, why are all the heroic spirits so beautiful? As I think about this, I find myself looking up at Ryder's face out of sheer curiosity. Wow, she is tall! She's easily like 170 centimeters tall. It really isn't a time for calm observation. Being alone with her is a problem in itself. I should hurry out of the Mato Mansion. Ryder sticks with me all the way to the entrance. I don't know about this. She doesn't even seem alive. Maybe she'll tr answer if I try talking to her. Come on, we gotta ch we gotta chat her up. Hey, uh, Ryder, was it? Uh, was what Shinji said earlier true? I asked, not really expecting a response. There's no change in Ryder, just her long hair fluttering in the wind. I figured as much. Sorry for asking such a stupid question, we're supposed to be enemies. I step out through the door, raising my hand to show her my appreciation for seeing me out. But then, he did not lie. There is a witch living in the mountains. Huh? Ryder? Oh, snap. You must proceed with caution if you intend to challenge her. That witch knows how the minds of men work. Ryder speaks indifferently. I realize her voice is drawing me in and I shake my head clear to her. Uh, thanks for the warning. And take good care of Shinji. As you can see, he's a bit of a pain, but I hope you can protect him. I catch myself getting surprised, but I manage to reply. I guess that was funny because... You are a noble soul. I can see why Shinji warmed to you. Ryder giggles softly and disappears into the motto house. I walk down the hill and return to the intersection. If I walk toward the residential area on the other side, I'll be heading home, but... There's a mass at Ryudo Temple, huh? It's about an hour's walk towards the mountain from here. The desolate mountain road eventually reached the gates of Ryudo Temple. Ryudo Temple is a big temple on, up, up, on the, up on the mountain. It's about the size of our school. The cemetery is large. The temple itself is like a small world of its own, with about 50 training monks living on its grounds. The people in town use the Ryudo Temple for various purposes, but they also respect it as a sacred place that should be entered lightly. Oh, snap! That's Issei's place. That's where Issei lives. I forgot. Now that I think about it, I haven't been to Ryudo Temple recently. I haven't been there ever since I stayed there for some mental training last summer. I know temple life is harsh during the winter, so I was thinking about visiting during winter break. Mm -hmm. What's the guy who cut afternoon classes doing here? Speak of the devil. I run into Ryudo Temple's heir, Issei Ryudo, on the road. Hey there, is school over? Obviously. I don't have anything to do for the student council I was heading home. Is something wrong? You look like you were staring up at the mountain. No, there's nothing wrong. I just felt like going home. Teachers would be out of a job like if people like you just cut classes whenever they felt like it. Anyway, I'm curious why you were staring at the mountain. It's nothing. But can I ask you a question? Has anything strange happened recently? Change is constant, but doesn't lead to big, drastic developments. The mountain is always at peace, and peace is the focus of daily life. Issei, I'm being serious here. 
How dare you? So am I. I guess you are. Sorry to bother you. It's fine as long as you understand. I never kid around with you, Emiya. Ise clears his throat and calms himself down. Though, if I do have to report it that there has been a change, that said, I'm not entirely sure how to explain it. A change at the temple? Yeah, but not at the mountain, however. The situation has left everyone in the temple restless. We have a guest at the temple. They're apparently an acquaintance of my father, but the awkwardness is because of them. She's a beautiful woman, which makes it a touchy subject. Honestly, I don't know why there's such a fuss over a woman. A woman? A woman? Does Ryudo Temple have any nuns? No, but they've made an exception for her, and we're letting her use a room until the wedding happens. Well, she really is beautiful, so I have to admit that I even I get captivated by her looks whenever I go out to fetch water from the well. What do you mean an exception? Issei, hey, are you even listening? Apologies. Uh, this is why women are bad news. Reject lust, Issei. Calm down, Issei. The Suda Council President mumbles some sort of sutra. Hello? You okay, Issei? I'm quite all right. I'm just not as disciplined, so it's not a matter of training harder. I can tell he's not listening. Issa continues to mumble, giving himself a pep talk, and disappears into the town's outskirts. By the time I got back home, the sun is almost setting. Just like yesterday, I'm the first one back home. Sakura and Fujine will probably get here soon too, and Osaka will come home later on. I mentioned what I learned from Shinji after Sakura and Fujine go home. There's no point talking in secret when those two are around. Having decided that, I better prepare dinner. So Sokka beat me with her cooking last night, and I need to do something to improve Fujine's mood. The secret ingredient to a great dish is time and effort rather than love. If I want to guarantee my win, I'll have to spend double the time I usually would on cooking. And so, here's what happened. Ah, I didn't lose! Tosaka, you're such a meanie! Let me reiterate, I'm not talking about the food's taste. According to you, tonight's dinner was the best you've ever tasted. So why not share it with everyone? I don't think that's what you meant. You said you didn't want to eat the food Shiro made. I was only talking about breakfast. I only ate dinner with everyone, and Emiya and I made an arrangement to take turns cooking dinner. So what reason is there for me not to eat? If you don't like that, you're welcome to take my turn cooking tomorrow. So brazen! She strikes right at my weakness. Dang, I never imagined you were such a bad student. And with that, Fujine reluctantly returns the wooden container of rice to the dining table. Five servings of my specially mixed rice safely return to the dining table. Come on, Fujine. I made plenty of food today, so there's no need to hoard it. Hoard it. I made enough rice and side dishes for everyone. You may be right, senpai. But this may be a bit too much even for you. Clack clack. Yes, a double-tiered barrel with food enough for four people is certainly over the top. Chomp chomp. It's not a barrel, it's a round container for rice. The main dish is rice today, so I made extra. If we have any leftovers, I'll make them in a rice box for lunch tomorrow. Munch munch. Oh, can I get on that lunch thing too? I don't like fried rice made from leftover rice, but this is exceptional. There's all kinds of stuff in this rice. What's inside? Choo choo. This is basically mushroom mixed rice, correct? And instead of using bean curd, you mix in yuzu citrus to make it aromatic. Such detail. Clank clank. Fine, I'm gonna eat this all by myself. Just you watch. 
Fujine must have given up monopolizing a wooden container of rice, but she starts shoveling food in her mouth with alarming speed. The moment her rice bowl is empty, she thrusts it out requesting another helping. That's fine, but you really don't need to rush. There's plenty. Don't mind me, I'm gonna eat all the food that you made, Shiro. I won't be letting some strangers just barge into our lives eat any of this food. Ujine snatches the rice bowl. Huh? I really don't get it. Sakura laughs uncomfortably, so Sokka looks exasperated and ignores Fujine and Saber just sits eating her food. I worked pretty hard to make all this, but it's looking like it, that might have backfired. The den in which I'd intended to make Sosaka admit defeat ended boisterously thanks to Fujine's eccentric behavior. I'll be heading home, senpai. Yeah, Fujine, get home, get Sakura home safely. Yeah, yeah, I know. Don't worry. Fujine takes Sakura's hand and they turn to go. What, you're looking at me weird? Of course I am. No normal person could even move after eating so much. You think so? I felt a bit full, but it was fine after, finish, after I finished eating it all. And the problem is that Tiger doesn't realize people have limits. You can't, you can't really expect something like that from a wild tiger. Hopefully we can try to keep her contained so she doesn't run wild in polite society. See you tomorrow. Don't stay up too late, you two. Yes, good night, senpai. Yep, night, Shiro. Sweethearts, I love them. I love them. I see the two off and go back to the living room. I mentioned I had something to tell them after dinner, so Tosaka and Saber are sitting in the living room looking serious. Good work today. So what did you want to tell us? It's about the other masters. There's something I want to tell you too. Saber's brows furrow slightly. As a servant, her life is focused on combat rather than a peaceful daily routine. I still don't think her wounds have completely healed. Even without her healing powers, the chest wound Lancer's noble phantasm inflicted won't heal quickly. With that in mind, I hesitate to tell them about Shinji. I'm the same as Shinji. I want to avoid fighting as much as possible, and I don't think it's right for a young girl like Saber to wield a sword. Shiro, do you have something to tell us? Yeah, let me get to the point. I met Ryder and her master today. What? R Ryder's master? When did that happen? That is absurd. What were you thinking meeting an enemy master alone? Whoa, hold on, hold on, calm down. Okay, look. It's okay, I ain't get hurt or nothing. Don't get so mad. I knew what I was doing. I know what I'm doing. Do not get mad. No, I'm certainly not angry. I am simply stupefied by your actions, Shiro. Ditto. Well, there's no point in getting angry over what he's done. So explain yourself, Shiro. Tosaka and Saber are glaring at me, obviously furious. Crap. I knew they'd say something about me being rash, but I never imagined they'd be so livid. I met the master this afternoon. I just followed him because he said he wanted to talk. I didn't fight him or anything. Yeah, I can tell. So what kind of person was Ryder's master? What sort of person? It was Shinji. He called out to me when I was looking around, walking around school looking for sources of the bounded field. He said he wanted to talk, so I followed him to the motto house. What? Shinji? You mean the Shinji? Yeah. Ryder was obeying Shinji and he knew about the Holy Grail War. Apparently, the Mato family is a noble family of mages. Yes, that's true, but that's impossible. The Mato family should have completely diminished by now. No matter what they try, no child of the Mato family could have magic circuits. Osaka seems pretty sure of what she's saying. If she says so, then Shinji and Sakura really don't have any magic circuits. Yeah, Shinji said the same thing. But he said he still knows about Magecraft. And that since he's the eldest male, that knowledge was passed down to him. So Sakura doesn't know anything. 
Anyway, that means he's a master similar to me. He doesn't have any magical energy, so you weren't able to detect him. I see. My mistake. I should have known there would be cases like him. As long as he had grimoires lying around, he could certainly become a master. Ah, that means he sucked right through everything I was doing. How could I be so careless? So Saku's beating herself up for what she's done so far. She may, she may be almost flawless, but it seems like she can be a bit ditzy too. The problem is, most of those gaps turn out to be fatal. I screwed up. I should have I should have kept a closer eye on Shinji. Had I known, I wouldn't let her construct that bounded field. Oh, about that. Shinji said he wasn't the one who set up the bounded field over the school. He said there's another master at school. Yes, I suppose that would be true. It's pretty obvious it's a master at school we're not aware of. But Shiro, don't tell me you believed Shinji when he said he wasn't the one who set up the bounded field. No, I'm not that much of a sucker. As long as Shinji's in our school, I'd give it a 50-50 chance that it's his doing. The other half is done by the other master. 50-50, huh? If you think that's the ratio, you really are a sucker. Well, whatever. Your optimism makes you who you are, and that's probably why Shinji thought it'd be okay to reveal his identity to you. Huh? Anyway, what did you talk to Shinji about? He asked whether I wanted to team up with him. Shinji has no intention of fighting, and it sounded like he wanted to work with someone so long as he knew them. Don't tell me you... No, you turn down this kind of thing normally, right? I've already teamed up with you anyway. Even if I were to answer, I should first consult you too. Right, that's true. But did you say you turned him down? Yeah, I know I said I would have consulted you about this, but I made up my mind about Shinji on my own. There wasn't much to talk about anyway. Oh, but did I do something rash? Not really. I think you made the right call. Besides, he was only asking you, so there's no room for me to butt in anyway. The way she's mumbling makes her seem, well, not quite herself. That was all I talked to Shinji about. I saw a writer too, but it didn't look like she was as that powerful of a servant to me. She's definitely not like Berserker, and she doesn't seem as intense as Ryder. I mean, as, as intense as Lancer. Ryder seemed decent. If Master felt that way, then it's likely true. But a servant's true power is determined by their noble phantasm. Until we find out who Ryder truly is, please do not let your guard down around her, Shiro. Yeah, I have no clue who which hero Ryder is. You know, Lancer and Berserker obviously look like heroes, but Ryder didn't quite have that same aura. I felt like she was difficult from typical servants. Different from typical servants, you say? I do not quite understand, but do you think you would be able to explain Shiro's discomfort, Rin? Oh yeah, I guess I understand, at least logically. You see, the master influences which heroic spirits are summoned as a servant. So because of that, master and servant tend to be similar. For example, if the master is a noble person, they'll summon a heroic spirit of, of similar disposition. On the other hand, a deeply scarred, traumatized person is likely to summon a servant with similar experiences. So that's probably why Shiro felt something off from Ryder. A master with a twisted personality might summon a vengeful ghost close to a heroic spirit rather than a hero. A vengeful ghost close to a spirit. Is that what you meant before? That's right. A tyrant who enjoys the sight of blood does not think twice about killing. There are plenty of heroes famous only for their brutality. So it wouldn't be a surprise for someone like that to become a servant as well. Is that true? Now that I think about it, I smelled blood on Ryder, but I didn't get the impression she was a bloodthirsty murderer. Well, that's all I have on Ryder. There's one more thing, and this might be the most important point. 
According to Raiden, it's apparently a master in Ryudo Temple. Someone is collecting magical energy from everyone in town. What do you two think about that? Ryudo Temple? Are you talking about that temple at the top of the mountain? Yeah, that's the one. Do you know anything about it, Tosaka? Actually, not at all. I've never been to Ryudo Temple. I don't know what kind of master would be up there, but a normal one wouldn't think to set camp in a desolate place like that. I was pretty surprised when I heard there was a master of Ryudo Temple. Being there might not draw much attention, but there, are t but there are a ton of monks living at the temple. We would definitely hear about it if they pulled something strange. I don't buy it. Even if it were true, Ryudo Temple is way out in the sticks. If they were to cast a net across Miyama and Shinto, that would be powerful magic, you know, but a, that would be powerful magic, but a waste of magical energy. Even if they collected magical energy from such a wide range, executing such large craft, large scale magecraft would be impossible. Osaka thinks for a moment, looking troubled. I'm relying on her experience here, so I can't interrupt her. Actually, Shiro's story is plausible. If that master is able to take hold of the temple, they will likely be able to execute magecraft of that caliber effortlessly. Do you know about Ryudo Temple Saber? I haven't taken you there yet. Have you forgotten, Shiro? I participated in the previous Holy Grail War. I know this town very well, and I know about the ley line that formed at that temple. A ley line? Hold on, that's what's at my house. Why would there be two ley lines center in one area? I do not know why, but that temple is likely a sanctuary for mages. I hear all lifelines in this area flow towards the temple, so it is the perfect point to collect souls. A mage would simply have to tap into the, to his natural flow to collect life force from, from, from the whole town. That's the first I've heard of it. But if it's true, it would certainly be possible for someone to steal life force from the entire city. So that area is spiritually powerful, right? That's just obvious. Otherwise, people wouldn't have built a temple up there in the first place. Uh, uh, of course, you don't have to tell me that. You don't have to tell me that. I figured as much. Temples and shrines have traditionally been built with their gods to protect the town. Monks don't pray to the gods and Buddha. To, monks don't pray to the gods and Buddha to offer people blessings. Instead, their job is to seal up any areas that people believe are unlucky, to ward off calamity. So, based on that, it's no surprise that the mountain where Ryudo Temple is located is a special place. Hey, don't tell me you thought Ryudo Temple was there just for show. What's wrong with that? I just thought that it was just some temple because there aren't any practicing theorma or whatever that is. Practicing Thaoma Terba What's that? There are people who help spirits go to heaven by means other than a sutra readings, worship, or prayer. An enlightened person can pull it off just through Sinto and Buddhist rites. But monks who aren't as experienced aren't able to reach that level. So they add their own powers to cast spells just like us. There's an organization for those people here in this country. I don't know much about them though, since they're nothing like the Mages Association. But more importantly, we should focus on the temple. If that temple is built on a ley line, masters would jump at the chance to seize it at the earliest opportunity. So why would other masters overlook it? Because Ryudo Temple is there. It's under surveillance, so it wouldn't be abused. All the monks of Ryudo Temple are real priests in training. They're not outliers like us. So it would be easy for a master to cajole people like them. No, that is incorrect, Rain. It would indeed be easy for a master to gain control of that temple. But the mountain is surrounded by a bounded field which proves pr problematic for masters. Huh? A bounded field that would trouble that would be trouble for us? Yes. Some sort of thea blah 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 is at work which removes everything other than the natural spirits from that mountain. It does not affect humans, but servants are quite vulnerable to it. 
It gets rid of everything other than natural spirits. Does that mean servants can't set foot in that mountain? It's not impossible. Well, our abilities will likely be considerably weakened. It's like receiving a command spell. It's like receiving a command spell order not to enter that place. Then how is the master of Ryudo Temple able to maintain their servant up there? In fact, the temple itself is not under the bounded field. I also hear that it works like a boundary which protects the temple. A bounded field just repels anything approaching from the outside. It has no other function. So once you're on inside, there's no Theomatabata that controls servants. But that's weird. And closing the temple like that would cut off the ley line. There should at least be one pathway in, or it wouldn't be a central point. That is right. If you think in terms of the temple, it cannot refuse visitors approaching by way of the main entrance. Following this logic, it is my understanding that the main road leading up to the temple does not have a bounded field cast over it. The main gate is the only place that does not have power to command servants like us. I see. I guess that's logical. If all the gates were completely closed off, then air inside would grow stagnant, so there's only one main gate. That is all I can tell you. So please, draw your own conclusions. If you would determine that there is a master present, then there is only one thing to do. I know what Saber wants to say. Her eyes are telling me that, since we know the enemy's location, we just need to attack, but... I'm going to pass. It feels like a trap, and honestly, I don't want to move based only on the information we have now. If we're going into the enemy's own base, then we should wait until we know what, what sort of servant they have. That is unexpected. I thought you would have been the first to suggest fighting. Insult me if you want. I'm just not back to his full strength, so I'm going to remain a spectator for now. Understood. Then Shiro, let us head over to the temple ourselves. Saber is matter of fact about it, but I'm... We're... We're... And I'm going to end the episode right here. Well, actually, what will I do? You know what? Hold on. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut out what I just said. Because I just made the decision... So I'm going to cut out what I said and I'm going to leave y'all in suspense. Y'all not going to know whether I'm fighting or whether I'm not fighting. Hey, I know. Y'all don't know. Is it fight? Is it flight? Is it a fight? Is it flight? Y'all don't know? I do know. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment. I'll read them all. Tap into the next one. Uh, Holy crap. I honestly did expect Shinji to be a master. I saw that kind of going right the way. I really did. And I do not trust him. I'm like 100% sure he's evil. We're going to have to kill him. And I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for that day. I'm waiting for it to happen. But peace out. I love you guys. Tap in.